This sermon that you're about to hear has some content in it that have really been stick, st stuck in my mind l lately concerning, um, and it talks about the reprobate mind and other aspects of, of you know, th basically how we are to live holy. And in these end times. And another intriguing aspect of this that you'll, you'll find is that of Revelation 6 um, and the colors in the article that he reads. This podcast, this, this sermon, was could not have been released in a, in a better time, a, a more timed date, if you will. Um, October 29th was the day that also not only did this sermon get released, but an example has come to our attention. And um, whether these allegations are true or not true, and it's those of uh, concerning Pastor Mike Bickle of International House of Prayer, a, uh, a church that holds 24 hours, 24-7 prayer and worship gatherings. Um, founded back in like the 1900s. I can't, I can't quote, you know, mention the exact, I don't remember the exact um, time that this was, was uh, founded, but he has been accused of sexual misconduct with women. Whether these allegations are true or not, um, this is an example to to uh, to me to a lot of us that I felt that uh, that I felt necessary to bring um, to show us that hey, this, you know we we've, we've got to live holy in these end times, and so our church, when you listen to this podcast, um, Pastor Mickey and Pastor Judy. All of us, we, we, um, attempt to preach and live the message of holiness and, and live the, uh, live out the gospel that we preach. So, thank you very much and we'll see you in the next segment. God bless. Dear Father, first of all, I want to thank you, Lord, for today. We want to thank you, Lord, for the, the service. God, I want to thank you, Lord, for uh, the pastor and, and my my pastor and, and, and everyone here that's here today. Dear God, and those that's out on the podcast, dear God, that we're going to reach, dear God. Lord, right now, we're living in some very, very, very troubled times, so dear Lord. And Lord, I just pray, God, Lord, that you would give us the words to speak. Yes. And Lord, that we would be able to say, God, things that would bring comfort and peace to your, the heart of your people, dear God. And Lord, those that are, that are not your people, dear God, Lord, that they would... It would, it, it would get their attention, dear God, to where they would start really considering you and your ways, Father. And I ask this blessing and this anointing in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, Peyton gave me this, and it says, uh, and she got it out of one of her the books she's been reading. But it says, I try to spur you to holiness by look with, looking forward to the coming of the Lord. And uh, the early church was always looking forward to the coming of Christ. Even though he was just there and he had been crucified, the early church was constantly looking. And, and you know, and, I, and the Lord showed me one time, that's one of the signs that your heart's not right if you're not looking and anticipating the coming of the Lord. There's something wrong in your heart. But anyway, it says uh, uh, the, the scripture is in... Uh, uh, 
Proverbs uh, 19, I think it's 19 and 8. or, But anyway, it's uh, where there's no vision, the people perish. And, uh, it, it, and, and this scripture, let, let me give you uh, one of the definitions of uh, this scripture. And this is out of a, 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 a Bible dictionary, a King James Bible dictionary. And it says in scripture, it, 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 it tells you what a vision is. In scripture, a revelation from God and an appearance or exhibition of something supernaturally presented to the minds of the prophets by which they are informed of future events, such were the vision, visions of Isaiah, Amos, and Ezekiel. And that's the King James Version dictionary uh, definition. And that Proverbs 29, 29, 18, I'm sorry. 29. 29, Proverbs 29, 18, yeah, I... I had it wrote down. I thought, well, that's going to be say, 19 didn't look no, Yeah, no, 29, uh, Proverbs 29 chapter, uh, verse 18. It said, where there's no vision, uh, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, uh, happy is he. And, and, and what I did is I broke that down. And the vision, what a vision means is a, a, the faculty or the ability or power or state of being able to act or see <clears throat> according to what God's showing you. Uh, but it says, but he that keepeth uh, the law, happy is he. The vision, see a lot of people get the vision messed up. They think, well, my, I see myself as a vision as a great evangelist. Or I see myself as a, as a great missionary. Or I see myself as a as a great teacher or, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Here's the vision that God wants his people to have, to keeping his word. That's the vision God wants his people to have. That, that's the main vision that God wants his people to have, is doing and keeping the word. But a lot of times we, because, uh, 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 you know, and, and, and to give you, give you an illustration, you know, uh, you show me a person that says, well, I have uh, 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 a vision of being a great missionary. I have a vision of this or that. And they have a bunch of sins in their lives. They, that's not a vision from God. If they got a bunch of sins in their lives. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but, 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 yep. but Because they're just, that's what they want. They're just doing what they want to do. And it says, uh, 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 the word happy is is uh, enjoyment or characterized by well-being of contentment is he. Here's the next scripture, Hosea 4, 6. And I'm going to share something with you here in a minute. And, and, and I'll tell you what, I, I, I shared this with a guy. And this guy uh, uh, is a Bible, kind of a Bible, uh, a real guy, real good in the word. When I shared this with this guy... He called me back the next day, and he says, you know what you shared with me really, really shook me up inside. And, but anyway, and I'll share it with you in a minute, okay? It says, uh, Hosea 4, 6, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now listen, to this is what God is saying in, in the book of Hosea. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Uh, but, and, and thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God. And, 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 and it says, I also will forget your children. And, and let me give you the illustration of how I've seen God work in my, in my life. When we was kids... God started dealing with my mom, and she lived, she, we used to live over on Southwest uh, 10th off of Walker. Mm -hmm. And uh, they started, and so she got under conviction. I didn't know this at the time. I was only like five, four or five years old. She would get under conviction, and what she would do, she would, uh, every time Billy Graham would come on TV, she'd make all the kids, make us all sit there and watch Billy Graham. I used to get under, when I was backslidden, when I wasn't serving the Lord, 
I would get under such conviction when Billy Graham would come on TV. I couldn't watch it. I, I'd get under such conviction. And so anyway, and eventually there was a Catholic church, Little Flyer Catholic Church is still there. The nuns and the priests would come out in the neighborhood, and they'd walk through the neighborhood, and they'd talk to the parents and, and, and all that stuff, and, and they'd come in our house, and my mom would talk to them and, and all that. Well, eventually my mom got under conviction, and she started sending us to Catholic school. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I went to Little Flower uh, in the first, second, and part of the third, and then when my dad, my dad actually won a house in a poker game, over here on Northwest 14th, we moved from Northwest 14th, to, from Southwest 10th to Northwest 14th, I was in the third grade, and they enrolled us into Rosary, St. Francis up there. Yeah. So we finished the third grade there, and after that we, we, we had to go to public schools because of the cost, but, uh, uh, <laughs> but it didn't take me long to become a heathen after that. <laughs> but, 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 but anyway, but, 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 but I wanna share, share with you this scripture here about what Hosea is saying, it says, uh, I, I want to read this again. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will reject thee. Now, this is God speaking. Mm -hmm. and, and, and thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God. Uh, I will also forget thy children. You know what's wrong with the kids today in America? Let me tell you what's wrong with a lot of kids today in America. I believe God's going to do a revival among a lot of them. But I also believe this. Their parents, see, back when I was growing up, God was pretty prevalent in, in, in a lot of families right. when I was growing up. Uh, but for whatever reason, the kids from that didn't carry that on right. like they should have. And what happened... And what happened was was uh, a lot of these kids, uh, my, some of my siblings and stuff, for whatever reason, we didn't carry on with kid uh, with our kids about God. Some of us did. I did. Me, me, Glenn and I did with our kids, but not everybody did. Well, and here's the deal. Now a lot of their kids, the Bible says God will actually going to forget your kids if you don't teach them. And pass on the things of God. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. God said, if, if if you don't do that, then then I'm going to forget your kid. And see, there's a promise there, but it's a conditional promise. The promise there is, if you do what you're supposed to do, everything's going to be okay for your family and you. But if you don't do, okay, let me go on to the next scripture, and 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 and, and this is the scripture I think that we're in. In Amos 8, 11, it said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall run, verse 12, they shall run from sea to sea and from the north to the east, and they shall run to and fro, seeking the word of God, and shall not find it. Many today, and this is what I've added, many today cannot find the word of of God because God considers them reprobate. Let, let, let me tell you what the word reprobate means. Reprobate is, is uh, that which is uh, rejected on account of its own worthlessness. Now we don't like to think of people as worthless or worthless, but what happens is it's by, by what we do as people it, it, it is what it makes us either worthless or not, or 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 or, 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 or worth something. Okay, mm -hmm. and it says here. It says uh, in, in Jeremiah six, uh, Jeremiah six uh, thirty. I'm going to read this to you real quick. But this one deal I'm going to show you here in a minute. It, it, it'll blow you away. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah six thirty says, uh, uh, "Reprobate silver shall man call them." Because the Lord has rejected them. In other words, that's out of Jeremiah 6.30. Reprobate silver shall man call them because the Lord has rejected them. Let, let, let me tell you something. If we reject the ways of God 
and don't teach them to our kids, that, 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 then God's going to reject our kids. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, so, so that, and that only kids applies to our kids, but applies to our grandkids too. Uh, okay, now, now let's uh, let me go on over here real quick. Uh, let me get this back up. Uh, it says uh, in uh, Hebrews six, chapter six, verse eight, and it says, "But that which." Bear thorns and briars is rejected, uh, and and is nigh unto cursing, whose end it shall be burned. And this is talking about the fruit or the non-fruit in people's lives. You see what I'm saying? Right. In, in other words, that 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 uh, if if we're bearing thorns and briars, the Bible says we'll be rejected. Now, now let me go. Let me get down here to share this with you. And I got this off the internet. It was it was a news story, and it stunned me so bad. And when I shared it with my buddy, when I, when I shared this with my buddy, <clears throat> he's the one that called me the next day and said, "Man, you don't know how shook, that shook me up." He said, "You don't know how much that shook me up what you read to me." I said, well, I said, it shook me up when I read it. So I said, I, 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 it's going to shake everybody up, I think, once they hear it. And, and here's what it is. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a news story that was off, of, uh, off the Internet. But anyway, it's, the name of it is Coincidence. The Palestinian flag's colors match the four horses of the apocalypse. And this is by a guy named uh, Michael S Snyder. And it said, uh, uh, editor's note, we see what we want to see, which is why it's easy to find signs that match our, our worldview. The information in this story below by Michael Snyder is obviously not new, but acts as a reminder that everything is tied together. Well, I'm not one who believes in coincidences, with that said, I, I am also not a fan of attributing evil without certainty of intent. Okay? Let me go on down here and read this. It says, oh, hang on. Uh, I don't know, and, and this is Michael Snyder. It says, uh, I don't know if there's really any correlation between Islam in general, or certain Muslim nations in particular to the end time prophecies of the Bible. This guy said he don't know if there's anything to that or not. Uh, it's one of the many theories that are flowing out to the day and have been floating around out there for decades. Now this is what he's saying. I, but I do believe we need to have as much information as possible presented to us. That is why I'm decided to publish this article after passing on it the last couple of days. Take it, uh, take from it what you want, what you will, and be discerning. Above all else, be prayerful as we navigate these turbulent times. And here's Snyder, here's what he's saying. Uh, hang on just a second. Here's what he's saying. I'm going to share something with you uh, that social media is really buzzing about right now. You can go to Revelations chapter 6 and you can find that the colors of the, of the horses, of the four horsemen in the apocalypse, uh, are riding are white, red, black, and pale. But the ancient Greek word is translated, as translated as pale in, in Revelation 6, 8, is more commonly translated as green. In fact, uh, in fact, three other times of the word uh, colorus is found in the New Testament is translated as green in the King James Bible. So for a more accurate translation, the colorus of Romans uh, Revelation 6-8 is green. And that, that would give us the horses that are white, red, black, and green. 
and it turns out these are the exact same four colors we find in the <laughs> Palestinian flag. Hmm. Now listen to this. Uh, now he says, of course, I do not believe chapter six, Revelation chapter six, is talking about the Palestinians, but I also, I, but I do think that is a really a weird coincidence. And now here's the next point. And this has also been pointed out that the four colors are used, uh, these four colors are used on the flags throughout the entire Islamic world. Them four colors. So it's black? Yeah, the, 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 the colors are, uh, let, me, let me get back to them. Red, white, black, and green. Green, yeah. Green. Well, the, 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 they're, they're in Revelation 6, 8. Uh, or Revelation chapter 6 uh, yeah it's uh, hang on a second yeah they, they are they are white red black and pale which is pale is also translated as green okay and and, and so 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 just and now he, this guy in this article says that he doesn't necessarily believe that that, but he said it's an awful strong and a very odd coincidence that this comes out just as what's going on in the world. Now, to, to, today I was reading on the news that Turkey has declared war on Israel because of what they're doing. Yeah, that, 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 that leader of Turkey has declared war on Israel because of what they're doing to the to the uh, Palestinians in in Gaza, and, and so uh, and all the uh, there's a lot of turmoil in the Middle East, but but so anyway so so I think that uh, now let me go on and finish with this, uh, but uh, and, and you have to get the whole article and read it because he goes into different things about about the article. But that was pretty much the meat of the article. And, and the guy that I told that to, he, he told me, he says, he said, man, he said, that is so powerful. He said, I, I would have never thought that. And I said, well, I, I, I said, I, it, I said, I don't know what it means, but I said, it definitely is a sign of something. See, and, and so anyway, I just wanted to tell people uh, and, and let me get back to the message now. Uh, it talks about, uh, when, when we talk about a reprobate person, and here's what uh, the warning signs of a reprobate mind, where a reprobate mind might be setting in. And this is where it's something the Christians has got to fight. Okay? Uh, the scripture no longer convicts you. That's one sign. Your own conscience no longer convicts you when you do wrong. You're numb to the things that concern God. Three, you start uh, losing the ability to discern from right and wrong. Four, you start calling good evil and evil good. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the society is today. That's just how the society is today. It says have ignored the voice of God so long that the Holy Spirit is mute in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, the Word of God is no longer the final authority in your life. You start to believe a lie as the truth and walk in strong delusions and deception. Right. You start justifying wrongdoing, and that's by a, 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 a pastor named Kevin Harden. And it says, but now here's the good part of what I'm trying to, of this message I'm trying to share. The good news is this, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. And I, I just want to let people know that no matter how troubled the times are, no matter how troubled things might be, I want to let them know that there is an answer, and that answer is to Christ, in Christ. And, and and I don't care if if, if, uh, 
you just go on lukewarm in the Lord and, and, and you've fallen away from God or if you've uh, even backslid and started going the other way and some of these reprobate uh, positions are, uh, uh, occur to you, we're in a position now to where when it says here that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. And God, that, that, that promise applies to anybody and everybody. It says, uh, Romans 10, 14 says, How shall we call on him, on him in whom we have not believed? And how, is she, how shall we believe in him of whom we have not heard? And how shall we hear without a preacher? So in other words, your life and my life and our life is, is to be a witness for Christ. And, and, and I know we all have our different ways of witnessing, and, and, and I think that's good. Uh, but, but I want to encourage you to be, be, be more fervent with it. Uh, I've been talking to my boys. I've been calling people. I've talked to all my kids and told them I sh shared this with my boys. Uh, uh, and it's got their attention. I share this with my boys and stuff like that, and, and, and I'm letting them know that hey, I don't know what this is, but I said I don't, I don't think it looks good. I said it don't look good. Yeah, right. and, and so anyway, let, let's go on to Romans, uh, 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 Romans ten fifteen. Okay, no, I just read that. Uh, and, and Romans, uh, go to Proverbs nineteen sixteen. I'm sorry. Yeah, Proverbs nineteen sixteen. It says, "He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth his ways shall die." And 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 and, and despiseth his ways. It means God's ways. If we despise God's ways. The Bible says that we'll die, and these are these are not threats. These I, I look at them as as loving warnings yeah. from a loving God. Okay, uh, pro, uh, Psalms nineteen eleven it says, "By them is thy servant warned, warned, and in keeping them there is great reward." Luke eleven twenty eight. Uh, but he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Not just hear it, but be a, not a hearer of the word, but the Bible says to be a doer of the word. Amen. Blessed, uh, uh, Psalms 119 and 2, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, that seek him with the whole heart. See, here lately, I mean, I for some reason, God's just really been stirring me about what's coming and what's happening in this world. And, and, and I, got a, I got another scripture I'm going to read to you, and, and, and it'll blow you. I'm telling you, it, the Lord gives this to me, and it's like, I like to fill out a share when they give it to me. I'm sitting there going, wow. Okay, here it says, uh, 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 Psalms... Uh, 119 and 2 says, uh, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and seek him with the whole heart. See, we got to seek God with our entire, our whole being. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And it says, uh, uh, Revelation 22 and 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have a right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates of the city. And, and here's... Uh, uh, I got a few more scriptures, but it's not very much. But it says, uh, uh, in, in the, when God gave me a vision about Nostradamus and Saddam Hussein and Armageddon, uh, this is a scripture that he gave me the other day. It's in Habakkuk 2, 3. It, it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. And not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because surely it shall come, it will not tarry. God is telling us that things are coming our way. Amen. And, and, I, and I think that we, as God's people, don't have to look at it through the eyes of fear, but we have to look at right. it, I mean, in a sense, 
it seems like it's a lot of this seems bad because when I was God's been showing me this stuff, I've been reading this stuff. I mean, it it, it kind of scares you. I'm sitting there going, "Oh man, my kids and this and that and all this stuff." You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And 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 what it's made me do is made me depend and trust in God mm-hmm. more. Let me tell you something about your kids. You can't do a thing about them. No. You can't, can't do. I'm we can't do. From Kim. We can't do a thing about them. Mm-hmm. But. But we know one, and we have a promise for one mm-hmm. that can do something about them. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so I, I just want people to know that uh, in, in here in, uh, go to uh, Second Thessalonians, uh, uh, and this is going to be the last, it's probably about 11 verses, uh, no, I mean it's probably about 6 verses. But it says, Second uh, Thessalonians 2, 6, it says, and now you know that uh, what withholdeth that it might be revealed in its time, that the mystery of iniquity doeth already work, only he who now letteth will let until it be taken out of the way. In other words, something is allowing things to go on, but eventually it's, that's going to be taken out of the way. Okay? And the wicked shall... Uh, and that wicked shall be revealed, verse uh, 8. And the Lord will consume him with the spirit of his mouth and shall de- destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the workings of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonder. And with all the deceitfulness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Uh, uh, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie that they might all be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness so, so, so let me share with you there's a lot of people still yet in this world and a lot of people in our families that still yet have not really surrendered their all to Christ and I, I want to encourage you don't give up on them. Amen. Don't give up on them. Uh, uh, and, 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 and there's a lot of people, a lot of our friends that are not, that have not come to the Lord. Yeah. Don't give up on them. Amen. Yeah, don't, go ahead. I was just going to ask before, like when you get through with the scriptures and everything, if, we, if you could do an altar call. Okay, I will, yeah. But, but, but so anyway, I, I just want to... Uh, to uh, uh, assure everyone here that this message is not to condemn. This message is to warn mm-hmm. and to make yeah. people aware. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and let's just be hypothetical for a minute. Just hypothetically say that there's nothing to it. That's all right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that, but, but I believe there is a lot to this. Right. Uh, I, and I think that uh, what we have to do is we have to really start seeking God. See, that's why I believe God allows this stuff to go on and this stuff to happen, because what it does is it gets us, draws us closer to Him. Amen. You see what I'm saying? It makes us closer to the Lord. So anyway, uh, uh, and, and so I, I'd like to, I'd like to, uh, like. I was talking to my sister there about a, about an altar call and stuff like that. What I want to do is uh, I'd, I'd like to give an altar call, and what I'll do is I'd like to to, to read that prayer. Uh, the curse breaking. Prayer. Yeah, that curse breaking prayer, but it's also it's also like the sinner's prayer, okay? And uh, <clears throat> and if you if you would, everyone, I'd like for you to repeat this prayer after me, okay? And and, and 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 I'm going to start off just uh, just everybody just get an attitude of prayer and, and and if you're in here and you pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Spirit, or, or, or however God would lead you. But I just say, uh, just say, dear Father, dear Father, I humble myself before you right now. I humble myself before you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I believe in my heart. Lord, I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my mouth. 
Amen. That you raised Jesus from the dead. That you raised Jesus from the dead. And I'm now calling you. And I'm now calling you. My Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for all my sins. Even as I. Even as I. Forgive those. Who have sinned against me. Who have sinned against me. Satan. Satan. I bind you this day. I bind you this day. In the name. In the name. Of the, Lord Christ, of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the authority. I have in Jesus Christ. I rebuke and destroy the power of every ancestral curse devised against me. I break any and all vows, oaths, uh, blood covenants, blood covenants rituals, 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 ceremonies. ceremonies. I, renounce sorcery, I renounce sorcery, witchcraft, witchcraft false, gods, false gods, false religions, all curses of death, destruction, destruction. Uh, suicide, suicide, murder, murder, murder violence, 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 abandonment, abandonment rejection, rejection, perversion, perversion infirmity, 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 and disease. And, disease. and I declare, and I declare in, the, uh, uh, in the name of Jesus, in so doing, I, I ask now that you would baptize me in the Holy Ghost and fire, sealing our ultimate, intimate relationship forever and ever. Father, I love you, and I pray this prayer to you in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for your salvation in the name of Jesus. And I want to tell you that that if you have family members, and this is for everyone on the podcast, if you have family members and people here, if you have family members, just make them a, 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 an issue of prayer before the Lord. Amen. And just ask God to, to, to in some way, you know, maybe he, God's got to send somebody different than us. Maybe he's got to send, uh, sometimes God can just do the work himself, but just ask the Lord to do that. And, and uh, I want to thank you for your patience and your bearing with me through this uh, sermon. Does anyone else have a testimony or anything they want to share? I'm going to, all right, should, okay, yeah, I'm going to turn this off. Okay. So, thank you all very much for listening to this podcast. Um, something I forgot to mention is that this would be a uh, re-upload. I am not able to d- delete any of any videos from my Rumble account that I know of. Uh, there's there's not really a way that I could I found to be able to do that. So uh, I'm just going to keep them the same throughout platforms uh, this time at least, and. This will be a re-upload of the sermon. And in past podcasts, uh, when you f- when you hear those gaps, you can just re- fast forward them. Um, but what they are is me trying to look for something. Um, but in the future, what I'm going to attempt to do, and I, and I hope, you know, um, what I'm going to attempt to do is, uh, when I need to look for something on the internet, and I need to look something up, maybe a scripture or whatever, I'm just going to, uh, do another segment. And then, when, as, as it comes with Braille Bibles, I still kind of want to keep that personal element in there. And to keep it relatable to to you as the, the sighted people, that's what I that's what we call them. Uh, I mean, yeah. And so, I may or may not. Uh, I am. Mean, yeah, that'll probably be the only thing that stays is is me getting up, and getting braille Bibles and stuff. So.
wanted to keep you updated. Um, so, on that, my next sermon is going to be concerning, and it's going to be the final one, as far as I know. It's going to be about the import. Uh, why? Oh, don't don't sell your soul is what it's called. Don't sell your soul. And <clears throat> thank you all very much for listening. If you enjoyed this, feel free to. To, to contact us at Storm Ministries, S T O R M M I N I S T R I E S dot com. And I mean, contact Pastor Mickey. That's his website. Um, you can also write to us at Put J, Preach Unto Them Jesus, P.O. Box 7293, Edmond, Oklahoma 73013. Again, that's Put J, Preach Unto Them Jesus, P.O. Box 7293, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73013. And thank you very much once again. Oh, I forgot to say too, uh, you can hit, you can go to the, the heading uh, on stormministries.com. There's a contact link and then there's also on the home page, there's a heading that says help our cause. Go below that, and that's where you can donate. All donations go to the Homeless Alliance and to our church. So thank you all very much, and we'll see you in the next sermon. God bless. Speech on. November. Voice over off.